Welcome back to IGN Live at Gamescom 2018. Ninjas seem to be having a moment in video games, and I am all about it. One such ninja game is The Messenger. Uh, and Martin here is from the developer Sabotage. Good to see you again. Thank we, you. We've been spending lots of quality time together this year yeah, in the lead it. up to The Messenger's release, mm -hmm. which is just around the corner now, uh, August 30th. Yeah. Right? Coming out in just a On couple Switch weeks. and Steam. Yeah. Switch and Steam. Uh, so let's talk about this game. We're going to bring up some uh, gameplay footage right here. I've been playing this game a lot. I played it on the whole flight over here uh, from San Francisco to uh, Germany, and uh, I was having a lot of fun with it. This game right. is really, really cool. Hopefully, you guys have been following our coverage of the game this year, but this is uh, an action platformer. Starts out as an 8 bit uh, style, uh, very similar to the old Ninja Gaiden games. Mm -hmm. And at some point in the game, it sort of flips the script, turns into a 16-bit game, and there's a whole gameplay mechanic about switching back and forth, and then the game actually blows up into more of a Metroidvania as opposed to less, less of a straightforward action platformer. So there's a lot going on in this game, right? Yeah, so the idea is to play with players' expectations, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, we start with a very, very traditional 8-bit platformer with a, a, a serious uh, take on, I will go kill the Demon King and yeah. save the world. Uh, and very quickly, you know, we surprise the player with the humor, mm -hmm. with uh, the fact that there's actually a talent tree there to unlock new abilities. Right. Uh, oh, and you. then, uh, <laughs> yeah, the game turns into something else completely when uh, the time travel thing with which brings us to 16-bit. Yeah. Know. We go from NES to Super NES yep. to, you know, uh, explain the the fact that the the character is traveling 500 years in the future. Yeah, um, yeah, that's actually how much time there was between the release of the NES and SNES. <laughs> 500 years. Uh, so to give people an idea just of how big this game is, like I said, I played it on my whole flight over here, and I haven't reached the 16-bit portion yet. I think I'm right there. I think You're I'm at close. a I You're think close. I'm at a, a pivotal boss fight. Um, but yeah, this is like a pretty big, pretty substantial, meaty game, right? Yeah, the idea is that at the point where you're, you're in the Tower of Time, uh, yeah. as I saw earlier, yeah. so normally that's where the character thinks that his adventure is about to finish yeah. and that the game is going to be ended and you've been playing for you know four or five hours, depending on your skill level, mm. and you're like, oh, that, this was fun. And then that's when, that, oh no, seriously, this <laughs> this takes a, another We're turn sort of and just there's, starting there's much more content there. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Now, I recognize this level here. Uh, tell us what this area is. Uh, this is the Quilshroom March, so it's uh, kind of a uh, corrupted swamp land with the uh, mushroom. With the, the boss is the uh, Quilshroom Queen, mm. which uh, I won't spoil what, ha what, what she is technically, but she's a very important part in the, yep. the messenger lore. Mm. And so this, the, this, the screens that we see currently is uh, one of the challenge rooms. You see mm -hmm. these, uh, these green medals yeah. are optional. Um, you know, medals that you get for going into, you know, more challenging areas mm -hmm. of the game. So it's for players who really want to have the, the most difficult experience in the game. A little bit like uh, the strawberries in NCLS, for example. Yeah, sure. Uh, so you don't have to collect them, but mm -hmm. if you do collect them all, there's something cool in that green chest over there. Ah, that's and so That's a reward. Yeah. And there's a lot of them. I think there's like 45. There's 45 yeah. of them. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you, you have to look for hidden areas and, and stuff. There's a lot of stuff that is hidden in the in the game, especially in, on the, your first uh, playthrough in 8-bit. Mm. And so then when you go back in 16-bit, because this is the 16-bit part yeah, of exactly. the Quilshroom March, uh, you'll be you know finding, oh, I, and now you have a map that's unlocking. Exactly. Too. Yeah, I haven't even unlocked the map exactly. yet. Exactly. <laughs> so when you unlock the map, there's a very funny moment. But uh, then you can see, oh, there's there's a pathway there that I, I'm sure I, I could find something else. Yeah. So it, it becomes more exploration, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I recognize this area, but I've only played through it in the 8-bit yeah. section. I haven't returned to and this. And so you're looking forward to hearing the 16-bit tune, right? It, yes, the very much. The music is every level is in 8-bit and 16-bit, and every yeah. single track in the game has both uh, an 8-bit and a 16-bit uh, version. So that's 59 tracks total. Yeah. Really good music by Rainbow Dragon Eyes. Yeah, it's very, I mean, it's very authentic SNES uh, and NES style chip tunes, right? Yeah, the 16 bit is more c is closer to actual, actually to Genesis uh, music. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, because yeah, it, 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 it felt uh, better for, for the game. Interesting. But then you also, you know, in, in to really sort of marry it to the Ninja Gaiden games of the past, you worked with the original composer from the Ninja Gaiden games, right? Yeah. To that create a couple tracks. That, that was af after the fact. It was yeah. Basically, we were at Bit Summit in, in May, mm. and uh, we were eating lunch, and we received a text uh, by uh, our developer pal saying, hey, the creator and uh, original composer of the original Ninja Gaiden are playing mm. the game. So we ran back, <laughs> we talked to them, they, they played the game, they really, really liked it, and they actually asked to take a picture with us, and then after that, uh, they said, oh, it's like Ninja Gaiden 4, and we were like, oh, my <laughs> Yeah. He went to the bathroom, he, 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 uh, the creative director, Thierry Boulanger, he, he went and cried for 15 minutes oh because that well was the most you know, wonderful praise he could ever get. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're, you're making a game. He was playing this like, game like, when he was eight, like 
all the time. He still plays it all the time, Ninja Gaiden <laughs> too. So yeah. So after the fact, they they wrote they wrote to us, and we we started you know getting chummy, and they said, hey, we'd like to compose a couple of, of tracks for uh, for your game, not to include in the game, but you know. So it's music uh, inspired by the Messenger, yeah. which is music inspired by their Expanded game. Ninja Gaiden. The, yeah. yeah. And it's available, you know, if, if, if people pre-order uh, the Messenger on Steam right now, hmm. uh, they can have these two tracks for free when the game releases. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so it's, uh, a moment ago we just saw this little red demon yeah. flying behind us here, and that's sort of how you handle your continue system, which I think is a pretty clever... Yeah, it's, uh, it's Quarble. So, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want in 2018 a game where after three times you die, you have to start <laughs> again from the start. That, that yeah. was for the, from the coin-up area where yeah. you have to pump quarters in mm -hmm. a game. Uh, so you still need a penalty for dying, right? So uh, we decided to, because we want to do um, modern game design, even though we're doing retro aesthetics, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a fun part of uh, the dying system is to do a dunce cap mechanic. So when you die, yeah. Quarble saves you. Uh, it brings you back in time to the latest checkpoint. But he also disses you. He will give you a little insult based on how you died. Mm. And then he will eat your loot for a few minutes uh, before he's satisfied and he just goes away. So yeah. technically, if you're a speedrunner or uh, a streamer and this yeah. little guy you know, Everyone's follows you know. around, it's like yeah. a dunce cap. You, yeah. Everybody <laughs> knows that you just failed. You know? so it's, it, it, I, we think it's a fun way. And it's also a, a, an endearing character. Yeah, he's, he's funny, uh, just like a lot of the game is funny. And uh, I like the pen the penalty is not too severe. Like he doesn't no. take away any of the currency you've already earned. No. He just blocks you from earning new currency for yeah. a few moments, and you can even upgrade a perk that even uh, shortens that amount of yeah. time. Right? Yeah. So it seems fair. Yeah, yeah I think the game is fair. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then so there's oh yeah, I like these little secret areas where you get all some the bonus the bonus cash charts. is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of uh, mobility in the game, so you've got this a uh, double jump mechanic, but it's a little bit. Yeah, we call More it cloud advanced. stepping. Cloud stepping, Because technically, yeah. it's not a double jump. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a single jump in the game, but every time you hit something with your sword, yeah. you are granted an additional jump. You, mm -hmm. it's, you see a little cloud appear uh, under your feet, and uh, you can save that jump up until you uh, jump again or yeah. you hit the ground. But you mm -hmm. can chain as many of those as you want. So technically, good players can uh, uh, use uh, their cloud stepping technique, their wingsuit, and mm -hmm. their uh, rope dart, yeah. and you know, not touch the ground for four or five screens. And yeah. uh, that's, uh, that's, we thought that it would be cool that if you play a ninja, you should look the part, you should feel like a ninja. Mm -hmm. People who watch you play should l say, hey, look, this, this really looks fun uh, to, uh, to play, and uh, it looks like a ninja. And for speedrunners, this is a really, really cool tool. Yeah. There's, a lot of there's, there's definitely a lot of fun uh, platforming challenges. In exactly. Yeah, yep. for sure. All right, so where are we here in the game? Oh, so this is uh, the first playable area. It's yeah. called the Autumn Hill. So it's when you you start the game. Uh, it's the uh, it's the first level. So basically, you're uh, you're you're you see in the background this uh, this moon and this uh, yeah. this mountain. This is the top of the mountain that you need to reach. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, this is later in the game when you go back to that area and you now have the the uh, time tiers that you go through to go from 8 bit to 16 bit. Yeah. So, yeah. And this character here, the shopkeeper, he's really the source of a lot of the humor in the game. He's the this star. Yeah. He's the star, man. Yeah. Uh, technically, you know, this is the character that brings uh, a lot of the flavor to the game because he's, he's the mysterious guy that's uh, yeah. telling you, you know, giving you small hints of where you're going. He's, he's being a little douchey because he's, 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 <laughs> he's you know, uh, but he's also telling you a ton of stories. You know, you can yeah. bypass, if, if you're not into that, you can bypass 90% of the dialogue in this yeah. game. But I think it's one of the things that distinguishes the game the most is the fact that this guy will actually tell you life-affirming stories, mm -hmm. uh, parables, and really, really uh, funny, uh, funny stuff. All the while, you know, uh, unveiling uh, new, uh, new stuff about the intrigue of the game. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think people will be surprised with how funny this game is. Yeah, because that's not what it looks like right then, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> the we bosses are, are pretty funny, too. Yeah, that's true. Most of them. Uh, yeah, I like the two, the, the twin, like, Cyclops. Yeah, uh, Colossus and Seuss. Yeah, those yeah. guys are pretty <laughs> good. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of the, the sort of uh, switching mechanic here between 8-bit and 16-bit. That sort of yep. results in some... Would you call it? Would you call it puzzle solving? Some like light puzzle solving? Yeah, it depends on the area. Com in this area, it's more like uh, moment to moment. Little, uh, you got you have <coughs> to backtrack and find a way. In, in other places, you really have to go far into a level to switch back to the and then find another entrance to another area that mm -hmm. leads to completely new levels. So it, it really depends. We try not to have all the same. Uh, 
mechanics all the time. So, so these little uh, circles, uh, sometimes you will see uh, fireflies. If you hit mm -hmm. them, the circle get larger, and mm -hmm. then you can uh, uh, you can go through and uh, avoid uh, spikes or stuff like that. So we tr we try to to do pacing so that you know there's never any uh, moment where you think, okay, I've been doing that for too long that I'm bored now. Yeah. Every time you know we need to switch to I'll go back to the shopkeeper, get a little story, up a new level, a new mechanic, a new upgrade. So. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's, it's important for us to, to get a, a good pacing. I really like the rope dart. The rope yeah. dart's really fun That's to use. That's awesome. Yeah. I like how in the game, uh, there's even a joke about how people, people just call it a grappling hook. Exactly. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. The, the game is very self-aware. We, we yeah. want to make uh, a, a pact with the players. Like, look, there's all, all of these tropes that we're playing with. Mm -hmm. Let's just acknowledge them and have fun with them. And then we will surprise you with stuff that you didn't expect because mm -hmm. we kind of led the ground to, you know, uh, cliches. Yeah. So the whole the whole setup for all this, yeah, this is like the sort Horrible. of loaded. Yeah. Every time you die and he saves you, he has a little quip, a little yeah, funny quip. Yeah. It's pretty good. Based on how you die. The whole setup for this is that uh, you, you're you're in a village of ninjas that lives on the western side of the world, and there's demons out there, and there's a prophecy that one day the demons will come, right, to yeah. sort of finish off the the humans. Uh, but then a messenger is supposed to arrive from the west and from save the west, yeah. save everyone, and he yeah. gets he gets there late. Yeah. <laughs> so the village is basically decimated you're yeah. the only one left and uh, you've been striving for adventure anyway so yeah. you want to you want to go in and, and figure you, you think you're basically gonna go and kill that demon king in a few minutes yeah. but yeah no, it's then you find out happen. there's a little bit more yeah a little bit more to it than that <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the game is out uh, very soon in just uh, a couple weeks now. Yeah, August 30th. You must uh, be pretty excited. Uh, uh, very, very yeah. excited. We're flying the whole team to PAX, mm. so we're going to have a, a boot there and the uh, Devolver area. We have a party there, and we're super excited to just have finally the game out and people playing it. Mm. Uh, read all the comments, because a, a lot of people have been you know, enjoying the, the little uh, gameplay that they've seen yeah. so far, but I think the most interesting. What really sold me when I, we started the company and decided was when I took the controller in my hands and I felt, you know, the gameplay, the controls, uh, the cloud stepping. Mm. For for me, yeah. that was oh my god. Yeah, it's this, really this is fun. Yeah, that's a really interesting mechanic. Yeah, this yeah, this is Sabotage's first game, right? Yes, yeah. we've been making, game making games for almost yeah. ten years yeah. before yeah. in Quebec City, where we're based. Uh, so our team is very experienced. People have shipped a ton of game, but it's the first game that, as a company that uh, that we ship. Here's a question: Can I have one of these shirts? The shirt is very cool. It where can, is I, where really can I get really this? Cool. Uh, I think uh, you sell this on your store. I think FanGamer will announce this uh, very okay. soon. Okay. I'm sorry because I didn't know I would be on camera today, <laughs> so I'm kind of spoiling this. Scoop. But yeah, FanGamer yeah. is going to sell that starting I think That's August 28th, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's mm. really nice. That's a nice. It's one. by artist Nina Matsumoto. It's very very cool. Uh, all right, the messenger is out. Yeah, there you go. Nice close up. The messenger is out August 30th. Uh, it is, it's a Damey game. We've got a Damey game here, ladies and gentlemen. It's ah, very cool. Yes. Martin, thank, thank, thank you so much for coming by the IGN stage. Thanks and, for having uh, me. Yeah, have a great show. Yeah. Stay tuned. So much more to come here at IGN Live from Gamescom in Germany right after this.